Cadbury is a national treasure and one of the world's biggest chocolate makers. In what's been an extraordinary year, cameras have been allowed unique access inside its secretive Willy Wonka world. Where real life umpa lumpers toil away to feed Britain's insatiable appetite for chocolate. The whole point we're here is to make delicious moments of joy. I know that might sound a bit corny, but that's what we're here for. While some production lines pump out vast quantities of old favourites. I love cream eggs. We make about 300 million a year. Others are busy creating brand new flavours. Strong orange smell. Very refreshing. Sometimes successfully. Whoever invented this is a genius. But not always. It's not perfect. Things can go wrong. This year, the company faces its biggest challenge for a century. To dramatically cut sugar from Cadbury Dairy Milk. You've got a brand that people are religious about, and that is really, really nerve-wracking. They're throwing everything they've got at the problem. From computers who've learned how to taste. When you chew into a product, this machine actually tracks what you're perceiving in your mouth. To the most finely tuned human taste buds in the land. Can we have a show of hands for who thought it was more bitter? OK, that's quite a consensus there. When the new version of dairy milk hits the shelves, will Cadbury hold on to its place in the heart of a chocolate-obsessed nation? You know, when I started this project, I had dark hair. If I if you're trying to take my hat off, your nose is now grey. <laughs>
as much as 500 tonnes can be made in a single day. And it all comes to a massive central warehouse near Birmingham, piled seven storeys high with chocolatey treats. Staff here battle temptation on a daily basis. I do like chocolate. So there's plenty of chocolate in the canteen, there's plenty of chocolate in the office, and you can eat as much as you want. Most new people spend a week trying to avoid it, and then they go for it. And within 10 days, they put half a stone on. With the nation's waistline bulging, food manufacturers like Cadbury face a problem. New government guidelines mean they're now under pressure to provide reduced sugar products. For Cadbury, the challenge is huge. The vast majority of its chocolate bars are more than 50% sugar. A bar of dairy milk, 56 grams of it per 100 is sugar. It is a frightening thing. It's like if I had to change something radical about my iconic product, and I've got a few iconic products, if I had to change one massive thing because I was forced to by society, by media, and it changed it, I'd be frightened if my sales would plummet so much it would be detrimental to my business. The man entrusted with solving Cadbury's sugar problem is chocolate scientist Adam Harris. Just hold on to the handrails when you're coming up, guys. In the Bourneville factory's experimental pilot plant, he's working on a hush-hush project to make a version of dairy milk which is 30% less sugar. We're now going to put some ingredients in here that are top secret. Unfortunately, you can't look inside the buckets because that's where the secret lies. He's meddled for two years with the sacred recipe and thinks he's conjured a solution replacing sugar with fibre. Sugar's in chocolate for sweetness. It also provides like a scaffolding within the chocolate. You take that scaffolding away, the chocolate falls down, and you have to replace it with something else, and we're replacing that with fibre. Adam may have managed to replace the sweetness of sugar, but a mouthful of fibre doesn't sound quite so appetising. The really critical step in the process is about how it feels in the mouth. So if you, have big, so if you had a, a spoonful of sugar and put that in your mouth, you feel the grittiness um, versus a spoonful of icing sugar in the mouth, which is quite smooth. And what we're trying to do is get to that nice, smooth texture. With reduced sugar chocolate, that's even more critical. If we don't get this right, that when you eat this chocolate, it isn't going to melt in the mouth how you'd expect it to melt. With a launch date looming, Adam's new recipe is now ready to go into its final testing phase. This is a baby, right, that, that me and the team have been working on for over two years. And, um, you know, with any baby, you want to look after it and make sure you take it through and, and allow it to grow up in the right and proper way. It's currently in the nursery, and we're just about to release it to, to the big school. And as any parent knows, that's a really, like, scary thing to be doing. Hopefully, my baby's going to grow up nicely and, and uh, be loved by everybody in the marketplace. If it's not, I may have some nights of crying. <laughs> While Adam is busy removing sugar from dairy milk, production of one of the sugariest treats that Cadbury makes is running at full tilt. A million cream eggs roll off the line every day. I don't know where they go. You mean, if you look at the belt, just, it's just like a, a waterfall cascade of eggs. But I'm glad they do. <laughs> Keeps me in a job. <laughs> the formation of the legendary cream egg is another process normally shrouded in secrecy. The yolk is actually part of the cream, so it's exactly the same cream with a bit of colouring, basically. So we only put the yolk on one half, and then when the moulds close together, we get a continuous yolk centre. I 
of premix. Um, we make about 300 million a year. So I think that works out about six for every person within the country. So somebody eats a lot of premix. Cream eggs are best eaten when they've been in the fridge. Can you hear that? Oh, I've got it all over me. I mean, I've definitely eaten a whole box. You know, when they did the six box, definitely eaten that in one sitting. A child who puts away one of these in two or three minutes is consuming their entire ration of sugar for the day. It's an enormous instant sugar bomb and it's really best not to think about it while the same tiny sugar bomb is being wolfed down around the country in a small town in the midlands it's undergoing a strange transformation it was quite manic for a while People were going absolutely mad for us. <laughs> I had a customer come in and I was telling them how nice they were. And they was like, I was, come on, try one. So they tried one and about 10 minutes later to come back and they was working in a warehouse round and they took 10. Basically, you unwrap it, roll it in the flour, dip it in the butter and then drop it as gently as you can into the pan. You hear about the Mars bars and you hear about the Snickers. But it's like um, a Cadbury's cream egg. You think it'd just completely spoil it, but it doesn't. It works better if it's double dipped. It just gives it that extra little bit of firmness on the outside when it's done. Makes it a little bit easier to eat as well without it squishing all over your hands and everything, I think. That's basically it when it's cooked. Cream egg's done now. I haven't actually tried them myself. Okay. Mm. I just kind of thought they might be a bit too sickly. In the Bourneville factory's pilot plant, chocolate scientist Adam Harris has spent over two years struggling to reinvent Cadbury dairy milk by taking out 30% of its sugar. We're working on something massive that is very, very new for the chocolate world. This is by far one of the most difficult things I've ever had to deliver in my career. You know, you've got um, a brand that people are religious about. You know, until people are buying this in the marketplace, I'm going to be worrying about it. There's just one more ingredient to add to his secret formula. This is beautiful cocoa butter. A couple of gallons of pure fat. <laughs> While Adam's team cook up a 30% less sugar prototype, other Oompa Lumpers have been given nearly £5 million to put Cadbury products under the microscope and feed them into computers. In one lab, a researcher samples chocolate and breathes out chalky fumes into a state-of-the-art machine capable of measuring what she's tasting. When you chew into a product in your mouth, you sense it through your nose. This machine actually, you know, you can breathe into it and it tracks what you're uh, perceiving in your mouth. Upstairs is the department of mouthfeel, where Dr. Chi Hei masticates for a living. So the average uh, consumer uh, chewing times around 20 seconds. Dr. Hei has a PhD in the science of chewing. Most people will bite at the beginning and then changing side, using tongue from side to side. 
and other people put the chocolate in their mouth and let it melt. Only by seeing how the globules of fat, sugar and cocoa arrange themselves on his slide can Dr Hay unlock the secret to the perfect mouthfeel that will make Cadbury products irresistible. And irresistibility is what Cadbury has been selling us for decades. From bribing naughty school children to seductive women enjoying chocolatey mouthfeel through to cream eggs being used to resolve a sticky situation. We advertise cream egg every year because you need to remind people that it's back. It's a product that's only in market from January until Easter every year, so it's important that when people are going into the shops, they're like, oh yeah, I remember that. I'm gonna pick one up and try it again. Haven't had one in a while. This year, the cream egg campaign is a glorified nationwide Easter egg hunt, using white chocolate eggs, some with golden tickets worth up to £10,000. It's kind of like the lottery. Like, I don't think that I would ever actually win it. And I don't go out specifically with the hope of getting the white cream egg. I mean, it's always in the back of my mind, obviously, because it's like, oh, maybe this time. I mean, obviously, somebody has to. But the chance of actually finding it, I think, is, is, is pretty low. Probably better off actually buying a lottery ticket. Right, so we'll get the chocolate on first. For the white cream egg hunt, 5,000 eggs will be needed. Maggie and Parmesit have been given the task of producing them. We can't make them in the factory because the production run will be too small. Everyone is individually made in this little room. This is the fondant, the sticky, gooey stuff that goes in the middle. Right, that looks about... The very sweet. Yeah, the filling is mainly sugar. Like their milk chocolate twin, handmade white eggs are one of the most sugar-dense treats Cadbury produce. They're also one of the trickiest to make. You do the white one. OK. You do that I'll one. do the yolk. Palm's my um, sorcerer's apprentice. Even though she's worked with chocolate, she hasn't actually handmade them. Ah, oh, we need the hairdryer palm. After an hour of meticulous crafting, the final touches are added before Parmesit can attempt the trickiest part of the process. <laughs> Line it up properly. <laughs> Marrying the two halves together. Oh, no! Oh, see? Oh. See? <laughs> no! <laughs> like that. Oh. Disaster. Leaking. That's a definite disaster. That, that's yeah. 36 out the window now. <laughs> 36 and gone now. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Turn it, turn it. An hour later, and they're ready to try again. Yeah, get it closer to you. Get... Quick. That's it. That's, That's oh, all right. Only nearly. some. Only some. Even when it goes well, there are still casualties on the battlefield. You're constantly counting eggs just to see how far you are. It's like, am I near that 5,000 yet? While Maggie's careful eye ensures only flawless eggs will leave her kitchen, in the factory, the human quality control team has been replaced with the beady red eye of a laser scanner. Bathroom, it will reject, it will reject everything, they are really good. <laughs> it's just made a tiny little imperfection there. 
if I was looking at it, I wouldn't have spotted it because they're going too quick, so I wouldn't have spotted it. <laughs> but even with the new technology, expensive mishaps can still occur. So we've had a bit of a pile up on the floor at the moment. Uh, things can go wrong on this line. It's, it's not perfect. Things can go wrong. Uh, just got to clean. That's not supposed to happen. We'll clean it all up and then we'll empty it all out and we'll start again. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sounds like a plan. So this is a lot of money going in the bin. And obviously it's four way, so obviously it can't go anywhere near the, the customer. So into the red bin and the pigs will be happy. Though machines can be fallible, Cadbury's owners, American food giant Mondelez, have invested heavily in them. Spending £75 million automating and improving the Bourneville site. Now, it only takes four people to turn out 400 bars a minute. I know we're working with new equipment, which is good, but we have less people on the plants. You know, it's back in the day, we had more people, and it just seemed easier. Nowadays, around 2,000 people work at Bourneville. In the 1950s, there were five times that number. To accommodate its workforce, the Cadbury family built Bourneville Village, a kind of chocolate box utopia with schools, shops, parks and homes. They had a dentist, they had a physiotherapy department, they had a doctor, they had a nurse. They looked after you so well. I think the magic was everybody that came in was welcomed into the family. Yes. And it, it sort of drew you in. I think you, you, you felt like this, I don't know, magnetic pull. It came from the top that people were important mm. and the people were what made Cadbury's. Yeah. It became your life. Cadbury's became your yeah, life. Yeah. Yeah. On my shift alone, there was 24 people per shift. That was not including management. That was just us little worker bees actually making the stuff that it, it, it churned out. Now it's you know, across the, the other side of the room, there's another bloke working, and if you want to talk to him, you've got to get on the phone, because he's too far away to talk to. Mr Mondelay, or whoever it is, the chief of, of the whole company, would like to walk in, press a button, and at the end of the day, all the chocolates come out. Mm -hmm. But, and that's what it's getting to. We have had to change. The older people have had to change. Uh, it's a change or leave. Yes, we got taken over by the Americans, and now they've made their mark on the plant, and they want to do it their way. Over in the pilot plant, the reduced sugar team has managed to produce a new version of dairy milk in liquid form. Now is the moment of truth for Adam. Can he get it to form into solid bars? So, I mean, the first one off the line is never, never the best one. So, on here, the, the, the chocolate hasn't quite flowed to the corners, and we've got a few air bubbles. The team adjusts the temperature and then crank up the vibration to try and get the new recipe to spread. The chocolate's not flowing how we'd like it to flow in the mould, which means you've got lots of crystals in there. I don't believe it's the chocolate that, that's causing us the issue, but it's a new and different chocolate, so, you know, we're learning by doing. You know, any job in life, you want to make sure you try and do the best in everything you do, and we're, we're no different from anybody else. Little basil, apple, coconut, and licorice with 
Cadbury's constant drive to keep people buying their products has, this year, taken a new turn. A colourful televised ad campaign promoting a competition for the public to come up with flavour combinations for a new chocolate bar. Melanie Fuller, a primary school teacher from Manchester, is one of the finalists. I entered the competition back in the summer and when I got an email saying I'd be shortlisted, I actually thought, oh, well, maybe we're going to get a chocolate bar in the post. Um, and then all of a sudden I've got having a phone call from somebody from Cadbury's and they're saying they're going to make my chocolate. This is a huge thing. You know, I am going to go to, to Bourneville, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, and go and have my chocolate bar made. Well, we had 220,000 people uh, enter the competition and obviously went through a kind of judging process and got to three finalists of which you are one. In a few months' time, the public will vote to decide if Melanie's recipe is the winning flavour. It's meant an awful lot because when I entered the competition, I was doing it by my mum's bedside. Uh, my mum was very poorly. We were talking about the different flavours. Uh, the raspberry, my mum really wanted the raspberry in because that was her favourite fruit. And we talked about how there wasn't any other chocolate bars we could think of that she had raspberry in there. Uh, I love the school. It's a small school. Getting the packaging right will be crucial to the success of the raspberry bar. I've been kind of um, wanting to get some little hidden details in there that you, you know you kind of know about, not necessarily everybody would see. My mum was her favourite colour was purple, hence purple butterfly. Yeah. That was her thing. You know, it would be great to have something that, something that you, you know that I can yeah. say to people. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. this is mine, and look, can you see that? It's good that we can get a bit so, of her in there. Hopefully, it's going to come out. Yes, yes. it is. <laughs> A prototype of Melanie's bar has been confected in the factory kitchen. Mm, it, it's, yeah, it's, really, it's really nice. You're happy with what I'm very happy with it, yes, I'm very, very happy. It's good to have a winner. I am totally not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, make it really well. <laughs> in the pilot plant, Adam's having more success moulding his bar. But it won't be ready to try until it's been through the cooling tunnel. This is a bit like waiting for your baby to be born. You know it's going to come out, you're just not off your way. <laughs> so not so bad. They've got a nice, they've got a nice, really nice shine to them on the surface. We've got a good snap. It's got the aroma that's reminiscent of Cadbury Dairy Milk, so that's, that's great. You gotta love chocolate. Try some new. Nice snap. That's good. Good now, Phil. That's all you want. Someone to say that's good. It's good, isn't it? It's good. <laughs> it's not just Adam's colleagues who are enjoying the finished article. In the labs, the computerized tasting machine is also rather enjoying his new bar. So 30% less, and this is the standard dairy milk. The profiles are consistent, so we've definitely managed to retain the signature flavor that you would expect. We think we've got the perfect profile now. Good free indulgence. <laughs> but what does guilt-free indulgence look like? In London, Cadbury's design agency is hard at work, creating a wrapper for the Sugar Light Bar. The challenge for lead designer Asa Cook is how to make less seem like more. Design is limitless, it's infinite. You can do anything. And in this case, we, we believe the right thing to do is all of the indulgence with none of the compromise. So you're not getting less, you're not getting a diet product. I, I want something with all the indulgence, um, but with an additional benefit. I'm not taking away, I'm giving you more. 
Each time Asa creates a Cadbury wrapper, he seeks inspiration with a pilgrimage to the Purple Palace. When you work on a brand like this, you feel a responsibility to understand the thoughts of the people that have gone before you, really. And it's figuring out what are those elements in the kind of DNA of the brand that you've, you've got to keep. Keeper of the Cadbury archive is Sarah Foden. In here, we've got some of the very early Cadbury Dairy Milk packaging. That is this one. actually a recreation, then, or is this the, the original yeah, from 1913, yeah. then? Do you reckon it's still edible? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to crack it open? No, I'm not going to try it. <laughs> that flowing shape has always been there the whole time, right? And, you know, from the scroll originally, which kind of denotes quality, to something which represents milk um, and kind of gives standout. And then, you know, the idea of that representing the milk has kind of been embraced. But you see it recurring so much through the entire history of the brand. So that's why the, that, that flowing shape is essential, I think. In the past, Cadbury have been so confident about dairy milk's appeal, they even ran a surreal ad where they didn't mention the bar at all, relying instead on a purple background to tell viewers what it is they're selling. But the new, untried, reduced sugar version is going to need all the help it can get. In London, Acer and his team are trying to make the bar feel irresistible to health-conscious chocoholics. This is an, an area where we started to think about inverting the whole pack, um, and it goes into a white bar with a purple mark. You can clearly see that it's better for you. It feels a bit more kind of milky, if you like, which is, uh, you know, an important element of dairy milk. But is it too diet? Is there something missing? Does it feel indulgent enough? Do you show cues of sugar in order to talk about the sugar reduction? Which is <laughs> not the right thing to do. You're focusing too much on the bit that you're taking out. After three months' work and hundreds of versions, the new bar is looking as appealing as they can make it. We've refined the shape of the curve to be more sympathetic to the dairy milk curve. The teal colour that we came to in the end connects to something slightly more natural, which works for what this product is. Are you going to be upset if this doesn't work? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> One wrapper that's definitely not revealing what's inside is the one wrapped around the 5,000 cream eggs that Maggie and Parmesit have finally made. They're transported 150 miles to an undercover operative whose job it is to hide them. As you would expect, it's the same weight and size as a regular egg. And then inside, there will be a congratulations. You have found a winning white egg. And in this case, this person has won £100. OK, team. Cheers. What a lovely day to be dropping eggs. Like a cross between Willy Wonka and the Easter Bunny, Jeremy Stern travels incognito up and down the country depositing prize eggs in supermarkets and corner shops. Okay. The practice has been dubbed reverse shoplifting. Well, we've done thousands and we've never been caught because their main worry is people stealing. Um, somebody putting an extra 65 p's worth of chocolate on their shelves uh, can't rank highly in their in, in, in their priorities. Just kind of get into a rhythm of doing it. Yeah? So that's it. Nice big smiles. In that's London, it, yeah, the competition to invent a new chocolate bar is reaching its climax. Yeah. So that's, it's going to be me. It's going to be me. And Melanie's campaign to win the public vote is in full swing. That's really nice. Yes, yeah. that's good. The winning bar will become a permanent fixture on shop shelves. 
You know, I sometimes I do go in supermarkets and accidentally go past the chocolate aisle, I must say, and uh, just go and see how they're doing. Really quite exciting. When I did the competition, I actually did it with my mum when um, she was in hospital. And she was a butterfly person, she was purple. And so we bought these and said, in the eulogy, I said, you know, be like Barb, be positive, be happy. And so I told um, Cadbury's about the butterfly, and obviously I wear them all the time. And a couple of weeks after I'd been to Bourneville, I got a phone call from somebody at Cadbury's, and they said, you know, we, we listened to you, and, and what they've done is they've put a little tiny butterfly on the back there, and it's hidden, it's behind the, behind the fold, so it's secret, and it's there for my mum. And, uh, and I can't, you know, every time I see that, it just makes me feel really, really happy. Um, it's very, very special. Meanwhile, on an industrial estate in the outskirts of Reading, a showdown is about to take place. It's time for Adam to offer up his bar to a panel of expert tasters. The comparison they're making today is um, Cadbury Dairy Milk against the new 30% less Cadbury Dairy Milk. Cadbury's iconic bar has been the nation's favourite for 114 years. Can Adam's new version really match up? A disaster would be, you know, if we saw massive differences um, away from Cadbury Dairy Milk. The tasting panel are a hand-picked group of ordinary people with extraordinary taste buds. Right, welcome, ladies. Um, so your first sample is 131. Their verdict will decide if Adam's prototype will ever see the fluorescent light of a supermarket shelf. It's a moment of truth. Adam's reduced sugar dairy milk prototype is being blind tested against the original. The panel don't know which one is which. So what did we think of that sample? What were the most outstanding attributes did you find? Sweet. Sweet. For me, it was very milky. Anything else? Smooth. Smooth. So the texture of an icing sugar. Yes. Um, in the mouth, and you're yes, all in agreement with that. It's a language that we'd expect to hear for, for that product. So, we'll see if we hear the same sort of things for the next product. Mm. What do you think of this sample, ladies? I thought the texture was different. Yeah. yeah. In what way, uh, Michelle? Was, I thought it was more adhesive. And OK. A bit Just stuck to your palate yeah, more. Yeah, stuck to the palate more. Right, yeah. OK. More bitter. Can we have a show of hands for who thought it was more bitter? Okay, that's quite a consensus there. So, would you say that this second sample differed quite a lot? Um, Texture-wise, it was more mouth coating yeah. and adhesive. Yeah. Okay, thank you, ladies. Well, I think that, that went that went well. Um, I guess as I expected it to go. So, we we saw some differences between the two products, which you know we'd expected to see. You know, you see a slight difference in sweetness, a slight difference in, in texture, and that's what happens when you take away some of the, the sugar. So these are things I didn't hear anything that I didn't expect to hear, which is <laughs> which is always a good story to have, I think. And which one did they try first? <laughs> I don't know if I should tell you that, James. I think it was quite quite exciting. I really want the consumers to find that out when they when they try it. You know, um, so I'm, I'm going to leave that hanging with you. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the claim line. How can I help? Lovely stuff. Bear with me just a second. The white cream egg campaign has started to produce lucky winners. Fantastic. Um, so when was it that you purchased? 
You've eaten it. Oh, good stuff. Was it? Was it delicious? <laughs> So, I just got back home from school, um, from a long bike ride against the wind. I collapse on my, um, chair. Toby comes in and brings me two cream eggs. Why does he do that? Because he's a very nice brother. Yeah. And he got me those two cream eggs. And so, I opened one. It was an ordinary, um, chocolate. Yeah. I ate it. And then I opened the next, and I go, Mum, Dad a white cream egg, and then there's a thing around it, and Mum was like, there's something around it. We unravel it, and there's this, and we read it out loud, and on the front, in big words, says, you have won 50 pounds. I'm going to share it with both of my brothers, because I just want to be a nice brother, just as he was a nice brother to me. Thanks to Cadbury, winners like Fred will be £50 better off. A lucky few will be £10,000 better off. But the biggest winner of all has been Cadbury themselves. Where do you want everybody? It's been a record-breaking year. <laughs> White Egg Campaign has achieved more sales this year than any other since cream eggs were first produced over 50 years ago. So, really good results. I think we absolutely smashed, and I'm really glad to see that. It's quite a year, guys. <laughs> Whilst Britain's gobbling down more high-sugar cream eggs than ever before, at Cadbury HQ, the new 30% less sugar wrapper has won the approval of the marketing team. I think it looks lovely. I think mm. it's really good. Whenever I look to buy a treat, it's got to look tasty and it's got to look nice. And if it doesn't look any of those things, then you wouldn't buy into it. I would say this is probably the biggest piece of innovation that we've ever had in, in Cadbury's history, because you don't change the recipe because it is so important. But the requirements today, some consumers are looking to really cut down their, their sugar levels, so it's important for us to be able to offer a choice to them. After extensive testing with expert tasting panels, the new reduced sugar bar is finally ready for launch. Well, there's 90-odd pallets in the warehouse today. Depending on how well the launch goes, I'm expecting it to be flooding in and flooding back out again. The new bar is bound for supermarkets up and down the country. It's over there, is it? Very excited. First time to see it on the shelf. Adam and his team are going to see how their offspring is doing. Now it's out in the real world. Yes, beautiful. Pride of place. Look at that. That's amazing. Oh my god. Just stand back and look at that. That's wicked. No, it looks great. It does, doesn't it? You feel a bit of relief. Huh? Slightly emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to cry now? No, I'm not going <laughs> to cry. It's not, it's not that emotional, basically. <laughs> and is it 30% less calories as well as 30% less sugar? That's the reason that there isn't. There's a small calorie reduction. So it's sort of a slimming bar. <laughs> no, no. This isn't, this isn't about, um, this is about giving our consumers choice um, to allow them to have less sugar in their, their, their diet if they so choose. While Adam and his team are aglow with parental pride, very satisfied. What do chocolate superfans make of the new bar? It's, it smells exactly the same. Mm. Similar texture. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit like coffee and softer. It's like a tinsel mint with mine. It's not disgusting, and it's got less sugar in it, so it's better for me. Would I know it was less sugar if you hadn't have told me? Possibly not. The original is, is better, but yeah. I would say this 
It is a Could get could get could addictive get and could um, be better for Yeah, them. it could make Kids. money. It could make money to cabbage. Yeah. So the sugar inside the chocolate is reduced. What about the calories? No. no so the only, calories only is, bit. is only just a little bit. So how does that make sense? Well, you would assume it means it's more healthier. But if it contains the same amount of calories, but less sugar, I don't get it. I don't get it. 